female pilot in Afghan history. Nilofar Rahami was also able to help get her parents just out of the country and joins us now. Ma'am, we appreciate uh, you being with us. Tell us what you know about the Taliban that you knew and that hunted you. Thank you for having me. Well, I have nothing positive to talk about those groups. They're just a violent group that they create everything that seems right for them. And absolutely, you know, like seeing the Taliban, how easy they got in power and Afghan government didn't do anything. Mm. It just brings pain into my heart to see what the future is going to look like. The future of Afghan women, the future of Afghan little girls and child, the innocent people that they get to get hurt from this situation. It's absolutely scary to watch and um, just a speechless. Honestly, yeah. like I have no word to describe what the future is going to bring. Well, it, it, it seems if history repeats itself, uh, which it often does, or at least rhymes, as Mark Twain would say, uh, to be scary. We have some pictures back when you were in the Air Force. You were in the Afghan Air Force, and we understand you left because of the death threats against you and the threats against your family as well. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism, both by President Biden today and uh, by a whole lot of folks in Congress and a lot of military analysts as well about the Afghan military itself for deserting, lack of a better word, over the past uh, few months. Is that fair criticism? Well, as an Afghan woman, you know, I have been abandoned by my government actually seven years ago. They left me alone to the hand of the Taliban and those terrorist groups that whatever happened to me, just why? Because I was a woman and I wore the uniform and fought for my country. But unfortunately, you know, we are witness that Afghan troops, Afghan military, army, air force, they all fought when they had a backup, when they had a support that they knew they have a strong support behind them. But as we all know, president of Afghanistan abandoned the whole country, the whole people. It killed the entire motivation of Afghan soldiers. And I have been watching some videos that the soldiers crying and the leaders actually there in charge, asking them to hand their guns, hmm. to just put their guns down and they shouldn't fight. Yeah, we understand, so we understand a, lot of the, a lot of the Taliban leadership paid off a lot of the Afghan military once the U.S. left. Uh, one last question for you. If, if you had a one-on-one -on -one with Kamala Harris and President Biden, what would you tell them about Afghanistan that based on the president's speech today, you don't think they understand? Well, as an Afghan, I totally would say that and speak for all the Afghans that they have to stop Pakistan and Iran from whatever game is they're playing right now, because every Afghans over years and years, they're suffering because of the Ta the Taliban, you know, their center, they're basically their training base in Pakistan. And the ISIS-K, we all know where their training base is. It's in Pakistan. They do not want Afghanistan to be in peace. Iran using their own Afghan, Afghan people against Afghan people to kill Afghans and fight. And Pakistan, you know, now I'm afraid for, you know, Afghanistan's future, that Afghanistan is going to turn out to a huge terrorist groups, which ISIS and Taliban, they all going to make that country their yeah. huge training base, and it's going to hurt the world. And I am so afraid for that day that, again, all those innocent people are going to suffer. And well, I would Nilifar, say... Yeah, you know, you're, you're right. It is the innocent people who always uh, do suffer. Um, and you make a great point about Pakistan and, and Iran, something that we've talked about on the program and will continue to do. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Appreciate your story. Glad your parents are out. Thank you for having me. All right. When we come back from weapons.